Hey everyone, it's Alex, and in this video, we're going to be discussing Mirage. Is Mirage good? Is it worth going after in the uh, spotlight caches? Is it worth the 3,000 tokens? We're going to be trying to answer all of that in this video. We actually have some gameplay examples that are recorded live on Twitch TV that you're going to catch later. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss Mirage in general. We're going to have some discussion points about how I feel this card fits into the meta and what role it plays. Now, one thing I will say is you'll see a video of me going up on the official Marvel Snap channel. I made a Mirage video for Marvel Snap itself, which is kind of fun and kind of cool. That also gave me a chance to play a lot of the card relatively early. Uh, so I got to get some like initial first impressions. I'm, I'm, you know, I got a chance to play it early. And uh, so I have a good feel of how this card actually fits. What I will tell you is that the card is good. It's a good card, but it's very narrow narrow in its niche. It's going to fit in like hand generation decks and it's good from a scouting perspective, but I do think that Cable has the edge there. Um, but Mirage is fantastic. It does feel really good. And in decks like this, for instance, where you have uh, basically your standard shell of Sarah control, Mirage fits very naturally for something like a Sentinel, where you can basically get some additional scouting with Mirage, uh, generate some additional value, and again, have an additional play to play later on. Because if you play Mirage on turn two, what you're able to do is you generally get a turn three three or four play from them and then you can follow up with the Sarah and play their card that's been buffed at a discounted rate which is kind of really cool so that's an initial kind of benefit there but what you're likely to see is more decks along this line the, these like hand generation decks the devil dinosaur based decks where Mirage is just going to do really good work and Mirage has a couple key synergies the first is naturally going to be Quinjet the opportunity to discount whatever you pull from Mirage is huge because Mirage's ability is going to give whatever you pull a plus two and then Quinjet gives it a negative one energy so it's disproportionately high value for you over your opponent. It obviously works really well with Collector. It's a huge buff to Collector style decks. So I really like the way Mirage plays. And moreover, you can double dip a little bit with something like a Moon Girl. Because if you Mirage something and then you Moon Girl it and you have Quinjet on the board, essentially everything you Moon Girl gets discounted. And now you're double dipping because you get the discounted Quinjet buff on the thing that you Miraged and you have two of them and that's basically plus two on each. So it's like Mirage was like a two six in that case, not to mention the amount of energy that was discounted with Quinjet. So this is a really cool deck too, Moon Mirage and Dino. And it's kind of like a standard Devil Dinosaur deck. And this is what I really like about Mirage. And if, when people ask me, is it worth it? Like if you're a relatively new player, you're low collection level, you're trying Trying to save your reserves i think it's worth trying to take a role at mirage because mirage goes into decks like this and like you don't need mystique if you're not pool three complete there are pool one and two devil dinosaur decks and mirage fits in those very nicely it's a great addition to those devil dinosaur decks and devil dinosaur is one of those cards honestly that never goes out of style it's always playable it's always good so getting a card that feels as evergreen uh as a uh, mirage in something like as evergreen as double dinosaur feels good so i think it's worth attacking from a standpoint of all collection levels however it's analogous to a couple different cards there's two there's three actually in particular that it steps on the toes of now the first is white queen very similar to Mirage, White Queen will copy a card from your opponent's hand, except White Queen is copying the top end and it does not provide a plus two. However, it's a four six versus a two two. Um, it's notable that White Queen usually gives you some very critical information in the late game, like what their late game play might be, whereas the mid game might not be as impactful for Mirage's scouting, but still not irrelevant. The other card worth discussing is Cable. This is the, there's two cards that really get destroyed here. Cable feels way worse than Mirage. Um, now I know that you're technically denying a card when you draw from the bottom of their deck, but that's not a great feeling. You're drawing from the bottom of their deck, right? You get the advantage of saying like, oh, they don't have their Shang-Chi or they don't have their Devil Dice or they don't have their whatever that might be important to their deck, whether it be, uh, you know, Silver Surfer or something. You pull an important piece and you know that their deck is now lacking it. Yeah, that's helpful with Cable specifically in Conquest, but pulling from the bottom feels a little worse. What I will say though, is that the other card and this card gets completely destroyed now. And I feel bad, but it's Maria Hill. You never play Maria Hill over Mirage. Like, I really don't think you do. The change from Maria Hill making it pull a random one or two just makes it worse now. Um, and I, I hate that because I like Maria Hill, but Mirage is just straight up better. There's no question. So now you have a card that's better than Cable, better than, uh, better than sorry, uh, Maria Hill, and it does the, the card generation that you want. And it actually synergizes immensely with Cape, uh, with uh, the Quinjet, right? So I really like these decks. There's another one as well, I'll just show you here quickly. And this one's like a classic Rocks and Hawks style deck. 
that gives you an opportunity to generate as much value as you can with something like a Dark Hawk. Nick Fury, which I absolutely love. You know I love myself Nick Fury. And then what you can do as well is you have the Mystique Devil Dinosaur combination. You're disrupting, you're creating value, but again, you have that Mirage. Ultimately, I think the card is good. I think it plays very well. I think it's worth going after. It's not going to like redefine the meta. You're not going to like completely, it's just not like an overpowered card. It's not going to shake things up the way a Zabu or Silver Surfer did or Darkhawk did. It's not that, but it's a very good version of the very good thing that it does. And so if anything, it kind of makes me hope that Cable or Maria Hill get touched up, buffed in some way, because like they just do not compete with Mirage. So I do think the cards worth targeting. My first impressions and my extended impressions, honestly, I got to play quite a bit with it early, um, are positive. I liked the card. It's that simple. And I think it really worked well in these shells. And it's obviously going to have other opportunities to work well in and other shells as well. But it really, really stands out in these Devil Dinosaur hand lists because it's just good for all players of all collection levels. Regardless, guys, if you'd like to support this series, hit the like button. It's tremendously valuable for, for me as a content creator, and I really do appreciate it. And consider subscribing if you're not subscribed yet. It just simply allows me to get some more videos to you more consistently, because YouTube can be a little weird sometimes. But yeah, Mirage has been good. I like Mirage. It's cool. It's a cool card. It works extremely well with Collector and, uh, and Quinjet. Like, extremely well. I think we can mirage into the quantum tunnel. It's definitely a hand size card, for sure. It is most certainly a hand size card. Okay, well that's Kitty Pride, I guess. It's pretty useful. Buddy, when I saw that Kirby Crackle Mystique, I almost just lost my mind. What an absolute chad. What an absolute chad. So I have their loot cage. I think we snap. We have their loot cage, which is plus two'd, right? We can rock in the quantum tunnel, roll on something. Quantum tunnel. They're snap. We're going. We're going eight cubes on a TVA game here. Eight cubes on TVA. Ship this. Yeah, we gotta do this. It's a lad. The lad's a good play. That's huge. Oh, we got ourselves a Quinjet. We're Quinjet Gaming. I love it. Now, the thing I love about Collector, though, is playing it on turn two. He has, like, a verticality that some other cards don't have. Like, you play him on turn two into something like Asgard, and you get a little concerned about playing too many cards there early and just, like, being weak, right? Ooh. It's actually pretty good. Man, I don't want to skip this turn. Agent Coulson! What a gamer! We're going for this here. We're going for it. I want Asgard! No! Short one. Short one. Oh, we tied it? Oh, nice. I didn't realize we tied it. Playing Sarah out here. We're kind of attacking multiple lanes here. I think we snapped. Snapping into Sarah is scary, though. But if they're not snapping, I'm willing to. They're choosing to give mid. Is this Devil Dinosaur left? What is this? Let's 
It's a big belt to Angela. They're short. Wow, we win this game. I like their deck. What it's worth. I like the deck. Victory. And this is the golding big belt, uh, big belt Angela. So they got gold big belt Angela. And I've got inked big belt Angela. Hell yeah. All right, we got collector. We have Angela. This is great. We snap. We snap turn one uh, Kitty Pride every time. Thanos control is awesome. It really is. If you just pull Thanos, you have yourself a great card. An absolutely great card. So the deck they're playing is very unlikely to have... Uh, hmm. We got a collector here, don't we? No. We collect her, Kitty Pride, Angela. Hmm. We stay we stay focused with the uh, Kitty Pride. Kitty Pride's a win condition for us. We have to attack this uh, this location, Quinjet. Oh, they pulled the Quinjet out, and they pulled their own Kitty Pride. Okay, so now they have a bit of an edge on us here, but our Kitty Pride's a little stronger. We Mirage, we Kitty. Is it Mirage here? We're not going to copy their Kitty Pride. I think we continue attacking this location. Wow, they hit us with a Gamora, that's huge. He has six in his hand. Did I watch the Barbie movie? No. Hmm. Ooh, Shauna. You don't see that every day. Short by one. Didn't expect Shauna. I respect that. I respect that Shauna play. I like their deck. A lot of generation. The deck, uh, Shauna obviously came from uh, Agent Coulson. The Ant-Man was the difference as well. Yeah, the Shauna Ant-Man literally won that game. Classic collector variant. Snapping, eh? They just played Mirage. So they potentially have Mystique. Their early uh, Kitty Pride's problematic. I think this is simply White Queen, Devil Dinosaur, Mystique, plus one. Yeah, I know, eh? Coulson into Shauna into A-Man. Uh, A -Man. Absolutely wild. So that's my Cosmo they picked up. Which is fine, because we can now Devil Dinosaur into the Cosmo location. And they can't Enchantress it. Now, unfortunately, we won't be able to, uh, to play Mystique into the Echo.
I need I need to talk to second dinner for you. Pulling a spotlight and getting a random four five. Oh, sad. I know, buddy. You know what? The uh, the token change is actually pretty huge in my opinion. So, have solace in the fact that uh, you know they are listening. They are listening. It's at least it's better now than it was before. Orca, holy crap! We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. There it is. I respect the Orca play, though. Nick Fury, it's the most power he had. I'm surprised he played Kitty Pride here. That felt like a misplay to me. That Kitty Pride has to go here. You just, with with Echo, you know I'm playing a Devil Dinosaur based deck. I can't do anything. Round four. They're on the fence. We have Kitty Pride Mirage in our opening hand. We snap. Uh, Quinjet's available too. They're snapping back. But we're going to start ramping up our Kitty Pride. We could go to the route of Mirage Quinjet. But I think it has to be Kitty Pride Quinjet and then Kitty Pride Mirage turn three. Mirage feels good. Mirage honestly feels good. Um, it feels like straight up power creep on Cable. I know Cable technically gets denies a card and stuff like that, but Mirage is just straight up better. Straight up better. It's been fun. I like it. I think it's a good card. It's a good card. It's definitely a good card, but it's niche. Like Mirage, it's going to have some places where it can fit. Like uh, Sarah Miracle was suggested, but mainly it's going to be hand size style decks, I think. We'll play down the Mirage. No Angela, so it doesn't really matter the order here. I respect that they're playing Echo. Echo is a, a weird card, though. Like, actually, against me right now, it's it's doing quite a bit. Oh, so I get their Quinjet? That's actually kind of huge. If I, if, is my Moon Girl even in my deck? Have I pulled Moon Girl once? Like, I legit do not remember ever pulling Moon Girl. Really? Really, Broad? Okay. We're going to do the Kitty Pride into Shuri because that's basically bad, like disastrous for them. We drop down the Quinjet. Might even just Moon Girl next turn. Kitty Pride, Quinjet. I feel bad for them. Me getting a free Shuri from X Mansion and then dropping Kitty Pride is just savage. Now, they have Collector. I don't, though. So, in this case here, it's most certainly you play Double Dinosaur mid. The problem is, is he does have Enchantress. So, we probably hold off on Double Dinosaur. But we're going to have a Nish... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I almost just did it. I almost just made the mistake. Wait, if you hover over, will it do, will it do anything? <gasps> It'll just make you play? Oh... So, because with Cosmo, Cosmo does the thing, right? With this, it doesn't care. What a gamer play. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad I'm paying attention. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you guys. I hear you. I see you. I see you. Yeah, if we Cosmo right, they really can't do anything against this Kitty Pride, right? Let's actually do the order different. Let's do Kitty Pride Cosmo. So, they're going to Nick Fury here. Basically the same power. No, I know, no, I was I, I was counting my hand. I was counting my hand. No, I'm counting my hand. I'm not playing Echo there. I was counting my hand to see how much power they're gonna be at. I think it's Dino it's Dino left, Kitty Pride right. Well they gave mid. Can't be Nick Fury, they lose. Oh, yeah, we win. Yep. There it is. Good old gold ticket. You love to see it. You love to see it. Um, honestly, my first impressions of Mirage, positive. Very positive. Ooh, Mystique value there. You love to see that too. 
But um, the decks are good. The decks just work. You put up a ton of pressure. You guys know how to play Double Dinosaur. Everyone plays Double Dinosaur, and I think Double Dinosaur gets an additional tool with Mirage that's really fun. And um, I think that's good. That's a good thing. I mean, it's one of those cards. The thing I said in my video for Marvel Snap's official channel was, the thing about Mirage that's great is it's great for everyone of all collection levels. Whether you're Pool 1, Pool 2, Series 5 complete, it doesn't matter, right? It's going to just be a good card that you can add to a... Double Dinosaur deck that's always going to be relevant. So I really do like the card. I really do like it. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on that next Marvel Snap video.